What's happening, guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So today we'll be taking a look at the January 3rd edition of Impact, the go-home show to homecoming. And today I am once again joined by Ro from the Impact Lounge. If you haven't checked out the Ro, uh, the Adam and Ro show before, be sure to do so exclusively on the Impact Lounge. Ro, what's going on? Not much, Keith. Thanks for having me back on, man. No, I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, not at all. Love talking wrestling, preferably Impact. Yeah, I mean, we don't get too, too much of it. So, like I said, same same thing here. I'm not able to talk to that many people. Um, but, yeah, here we are. So, what were your thoughts of the go-home show to Homecoming? I mean, wow. I, I mean, we, and we had talked about this. Like I said, watch. They're going to really nail this go-home show, you know, for it being its final episode. We'll find the final episode of Impact airing on Pop. And... I thought it was excellent only because I think us as a lot of wrestling fans were conditioned to believe go home shows towards pay-per-views normally are shows filled with a lot of pay-per-view packages. I mean, you know, maybe some confrontations, but not a whole lot as far as um, angles and wrestling wise. And we got a nice blend of not only them promoting the matches for homecoming, but also some of the matches that we had we had on this episode. I mean, there's so many different avenues they can go post uh, homecomings, and I thought that was pretty nice. Right, yeah, it kind of gave us a look at what we should expect from homecoming. And uh, again, being off for two weeks, you know, it, it, it killed the momentum a little bit. So having an actual show that wasn't just recaps and clips, they, they did a good job. Yeah, can't disagree. Yeah, so we opened the show with the uh, 10-man tag match. OVE, Matt Seidel, and Ethan Page versus the Rascals, Rich Swan and Willie Mack. Um, so this was a match where everybody got their shit in, so to speak. I mean, they did a good job showcasing everybody in the Ultimate X match. They, they It was a fun match overall. Good way to open the show. Crowd was really into it. And uh, yeah, what, what were your thoughts on this? I think first seeing all these participants, it just kind of um, let me know. And I think, you know, I could speak on behalf of a lot of Impact fans. You know, the one thing that we've always have thought was, oh, the tag team scene is uh, so thin. I mean, this displayed a majority of the tag team scene. I mean, excluding Cam and Fala and Desi, the Desi hit squad. So, you know, hopefully whatever happens post homecoming uh, from the match between LAX and Lucha Brothers, you know, hopefully we can get a program including one of the, you know, some of these teams. But um, outside of that, I mean, like you said, you said it best. Everyone kind of got their stuff in, and I mean that's fine. I just kind of, um, and I don't, I hate to be too nitpicky, but the thing that I hate when you're talking about everyone getting their stuff in is you see a lot of stalling sometimes for the spots, especially when they're doing the dives to the ring. Or like even in the case of when Jake uh, <laughs> hit the Chris Cutter to the outside. I mean, why would you hit a, a cutter on a crowd of people? I mean, boggles my mind. But, I mean, it looked nice. And, um, yeah, it was just a nice little sprint as always. And it's cool to see Willie get the win. But yeah. yeah no yeah, problems. Super stunner off the top rope. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he picked up the victory after hitting that on Dave Christ. After the match, Callahan grabs his bat, attacks Willie Mack, and uh, I think Jake grabbed the table from under the ring. And then uh, all three members of OV hit an all-seeing eye on Willie Mack through the table. Nice spot, which uh, leads us to them. I don't know if they actually made the match on Impact or Twitter afterward, but we are going to see Willie Mack versus Sammy Callahan at homecoming. Um, I kind of expected this match to eventually happen, and... Uh, Especially considering the fact that Sammy was their wrestler of the year and he wasn't featured on the pay-per-view is kind of surprising. So it makes sense to have this match happen. Yeah, um, and good good job by Impact for recognizing like, hey, you know, we kind of pegged this guy the MVP of Impact of 2018 and we don't have him on our first show of the year. So, you know, this this match, I mean... I think it was just a way to get both guys on the card, which is always good. 
Um, mm-hmm. I th- can see this playing part or possibly playing 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 a role in the Ultimate X match, but um, we'll see. Yeah, uh, not really sure who goes over here. I mean, I would assume Callahan would just because wrestler of the year. I feel like he needs to be elevated again. But do you really want to have Willie Mack losing? W- what are your thoughts? Who do you think is going to pick up the victory here? Uh, I could see I'm going with Callahan only because I think Willie, I mean, he, what he came in bout for glory, still relatively new. I don't think losses are going to hurt him too much. And if what they're showing is any indication of future plans, it looks like there is um, a program that uh, an extended program that might be in the works. So for, if he were to lose this match, I don't think it harms him that much. Yeah, I guess that's fair. And I think if Swan does end up picking up that X Division championship, we could see him and Callahan have something going forward. I mean, I know they've uh, been protecting each other, so to speak. I guess Callahan didn't attack Swan after he was kind of uh, holding back and covering Willie. So I don't know if they're going to go some way, some route with that. Yeah, that was interesting, and that's what it just had me thinking. I'm like, you know, they had really have something here, and with this match, then plus Ultimate X, it's probably going to all tie in together, you know, somewhat. Yeah, that's why I feel like putting the X Division Championship on one of either Jake or Rich would make sense with this whole thing going on, and then you have a story building post-homecoming with everything. Mm-hmm. So moving on up next, we had Eli Drake. He comes out, cuts a promo saying that he is forced to face Abyss at homecoming. He says we haven't seen Abyss since Eli took out Joseph Park. Same thing with Tommy Dreamer. Eli says he's an adapter because he is the last of a dying breed. Says he is hardcore. That brings Tommy Dreamer out. Chair in hand. He takes out Eli, hits him with a DDT. Puts the chair around Eli's head. Goes to do what Eli had done to him a few weeks back. Lights go out. Raven shows up. Uh, We saw Raven a few weeks ago or the last couple weeks previous to the two-week break. Uh, Dreamer and Raven have a stare-off. Eli wants them to kill each other. They end up beating up Eli. What'd you think? (laughs) I was so expecting Raven the DDT Dreamer just because that's uh, Raven. Um... You know, I think it was a nice for um, ECW fans, the nostalgia, because Dreamer and Raven have a, you know, big story to past and whatnot. Um, yeah, I mean, just a way to kind of sell the match in a sense, even though neither one of these guys are in the match at homecoming. But I just I guess I kind of worry a little bit for Eli only because. <laughs> Only because, no, no, not that he's not going to win. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'd be surprised if he didn't win at homecoming against Abyss. But it's just, and a, a lot of people has been talked about, what's the direction with him? Where are they kind of going with this? Because, you know, you have him cutting this promo about being the last of a dying breed. I mean, is he just speaking or is are they really going to go somewhere with that? And I think that's just what's key. But um, outside of this angle, I mean, I think it was cool. I mean, like I said, I would have liked to see Raven <laughs> DDT Dreamer just because. But um, no problems from my end. Yeah, I, I just don't know where they go here. I just hope, you know, this doesn't continue on. Uh, we've seen enough with Dreamer and Eli Drake. And, you know, at this point in Dreamer's career, he doesn't really need to be wrestling. They need to be opening that spotlight up for some younger talent to uh, push forward, which I really think... That should be Impact's direction moving forward, just with everything going on in the wrestling world and any free agents that are going to be picked up are going to be picked up by other promotions. So I think Impact needs to build for the future using their promotion, you know, their uh, partnerships with other promotions to bring in young talent and just kind of make let them make a name for themselves, take risks, try to build new stars. But uh, like you said, I, I would hope Eli is slated to move up to the main event. There's just a lot of moving parts going on in the main event now that it's tough to tell what direction they're going to go in. Yeah, you know, and that's the biggest thing, I think. And I'll piggyback off what you're saying as far as them needing to build new stars more than ever now um, because they're going to be in bidding wars now. And unfortunately, I think impacts. Well, I mean, I don't know their finances, but 
<clears throat> excuse me, I believe, you know, they're wor- kind of working on a semi tight budget. So some of these other promotions might be able to throw big money at, you know, the biggest free aid, the hottest free agents. So what they should do first off, I mean, I think utilize what they have, the roster they already have. I mean, it's plenty. But um, if you're going to sign folks, I would try to get the young, you know, the younger talent that are hungry, that just kind of want want that big break and uh, homegrown them and make them your own stars. I mean, they have the ability to. It's just, you know, you kind of have to just commit to it. So I think that's the biggest thing. But, yeah, hopefully this kind of catapults Eli back into the main event scene because, you know, regardless of the outcome of the uh, main event, the title uh, excuse me, <laughs> Impact World title match, I mean, there's going to have to be a next contender. And what they got to start doing for some of these um, uh, champions is they got to have some contenders lined up, you know, build some of these guys up so they're formidable contenders. I mean, you could only go the route of picking random guy A, random guy B so many times before people stop buying them as credible challengers. Right, and... Like there, there's no reason for Eli not not to win against Abyss because Abyss has nothing really to gain. Um, but yeah, w- we will see. Uh, so up next we had the Desi Hit Squad versus KM and Falaba, the rest of the tag division. Uh, so this match was all about Scarlet and trying to impress her. Gama Singh decided to dedicate the match to Scarlet. We uh find out a little later on after both teams are introduced that Scarlet will be observing from the stage. Um, they put on a decent little match here. Uh, good to see both of these teams showcase and actually doing something. The match did have a purpose with Scarlet, but that furthers the question of what are they doing with Scarlet? Are we actually going to see an end game here? I mean, they've been pushing the whole, uh, Video, sending videos in for a while now. It's they're an end date, or, or where do we go from here? That's that's my question. I think a lot of people are starting to question that as well. Is she a wrestler? Is she a manager? So, uh, what do you think? I mean, it just seems at this point she's being trotted out there for eye candy because you know a lot of people, you know, are high on her, high on her. You know, she's a highly attractive woman. Um. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you, though. Um, it looks, I mean, and I'm sure <laughs> I'm wrong, but it looks like the inevitable pa- inevitable pairing of her and Kay and Fala, since she seems to come out a lot for their matches. Um, but uh, outside of that, I think the biggest thing I'm looking at is between these two teams, you know, are these guys, well, since KM and Fala came up on the uh, winning and are they next in line for the tag team titles, you know, as far as uh, getting a shot? As far as Desi Hit Squad, I mean, you know, it might be time to pull the plug on this team. Um, I thought the first iteration with Gersinder Singh was fine, but now they uh, plugged in this other guy. And not saying that there's anything wrong with him, but there's been so much stop with this team and not enough go. I just feel like some of the momentum has been lost from any momentum they did have. Yeah, well, absolutely, and it's hard to build up either tag team when it seems like they're basically being treated as the bottom of the tag division, and if there's no stepping stones, it's hard to elevate them. But it seems with the whole KM, Falaba, and Scarlet things, a lot of stop and stall. It seems like they're going with it, and then it goes in another direction, and I mean, I I think the pairing of those three would be good. Granted, I don't think Fala and KM really need to get themselves over anymore. They're plenty over. I think they just need to be elevated up the card. And I think, you know, a tag title run in the futures would definitely benefit them. Yeah, it's one of the, you know, we always talk about the company needed to take chances. I think that's a chance they need to take. It's not going to hurt them at all. I, I think the biggest thing that we've seen, and even in past, when they've kind of relied on outside help, I mean, there's really never been somebody that they've brought in that really has moved the needle that significant. And with knowing that, you're able to take more chances. You know, whether you put the title on this guy or this team or on this big name. I mean, if the ratings are going to stay the same, why not just take a shot with something new instead of going to the well? Well, especially at this point with the move to pursuit, and it seems like, I mean, obviously it's partially owned by Anthem and... I would assume that ratings aren't the 
you know, the spotlight here. So this is the perfect time to give everything the green light and just see what sticks and run with it. Yeah, and I mean, they've shown in the past, too, when something hasn't worked, I mean, they're able to act fast and pull the plug on it. So I just, that's kind of the one thing I hope for 2019. I mean, because they need it now. I mean, there's so many other options. I think that's the biggest thing when you look at Impact now. I mean, there was a time where Impact was the the option. Now there's options. So if people are watching stuff and it's stuff they don't really like, hey, they can change and follow something else right no absolutely agree up next we had the lucha brothers cutting a promo they have a message for lax they say it won't be a friendly fight at homecoming lax broke the line of respect when i think santana struck pentagon so there was that later on lax had a rebuttal promo but uh i I always like what they did with the lucha brothers and their promos they let have them cut the promo in Spanish, then just give us subtitles. It's simple enough. Good message here. I, I thought they added a little heat to the match. Uh, but, yeah, what'd you think? Um, Here, and I'll, I guess I'll bunch in LAX's promo, too. Unless, did you want to do that one separately? Oh, no, we can we can bunch it in. Yeah, go for it. Okay, all right, I'll do with the Lucha Brothers. Um, You know, typical promo from them, I think, just a way to sell the match, because before the interaction that in the match the singles match that we had a couple episodes ago between Santana and Phoenix there was really no heat to this match I mean it just kind of seemed like a random challenge from the champions to challenge the Lucha Brothers so I mean now here we are leading up to homecoming you know they just kind of want to build some heat towards the match so no problem with that yeah with with LAX go ahead oh and I just wanted to add with the LAX promo I thought that promo I think now it's time to separate them from Conan. I think he's no longer needed only because I think when they initially brought him in, it was kind of, um, you know, to help give the new iteration of LAX some recognition because they were guys that not too many people were familiar with. But I think they've gotten over enough credit to impact. Like I said, you know, homegrown talent they're able oh, to yeah. do. Um He's no longer needed. So whatever the outcome is at the pay-per-view, I think they should find a way. And I'm not saying remove Conan from the company, but he's no longer needed needed to be associated with uh, the team anymore. Yeah, no. And I, I, I thought LAX did a hell of a job with this promo. Both men really, really sounded confident in what they were saying. Um, I feel like this promo would have been really good had they played it right after the challenge. Because obviously Conan is no longer, well, he says he's not going to side with either team, let them fight it out. Um, but, you know, the LAX said that they, uh, last time Conan wasn't in their corner, they went on that losing streak. And then they have to realize that Conan isn't always going to be there for them. And they need to prove to everyone that they can do it on their own. So, yeah, like I said, really good stuff from LAX. Yeah, and, you know, that was a nice way to play play that up, too. I like that. Because uh, they brought that up, and that's true. When Conan wasn't around, they went, they lost the titles and went on the losing streak. So this is kind of a way for LAX to prove themselves like, hey, look, we can win without you. Right, absolutely. And like you said, I think that's the that should be the next direction they go. Uh, they did a good enough job building them. I don't think Conan is necessarily needed. They've made a big enough name for themselves to keep them going forward and as you could see usually uh with this sp- person like conan he would have been the mouthpiece but just from this promo they obviously don't need it yeah and i i mean i i guess i wouldn't know what you would do with conan i mean i think he's useful um i mean as far as an on-screen character i mean i don't know know what you you would do I mean, hell, <laughs> maybe put him in the commentary that'd be funny <laughs> oh that would be interesting yeah but uh Hey, why not? It, it it is, it's just something we're gonna have to wait and see. There's a lot of possibilities here, especially with his uh, history with both teams. It, he could be the deciding factor. True. Uh, so up next we had Dark Alley versus Kiara Hogan. Uh, good little match here. This happened because of well everything that's been happening for the last couple months with Alley turning to the dark side. Uh, I did enjoy a little spot we saw. 
Uh, Allie propped up against the rope. Kiara went toward her. Allie moves out of the way, and she ends up taking Sue Young on the outside out with a suicide dive. Unfortunately, the crowd didn't give the reaction I was hoping for, and it seemed by Kiara's facial expression she was expecting a bigger reaction, too. Uh, but oh, what were you going to say? I heard you talking. Oh, no. Only thing I was going to say was, see, I think that's what happens sometimes when you have a show where, you know, a lot of times we've seen it in the earlier match with the 10 man tag where everybody's doing the dive spots. I think sometimes fans can get fatigued from it. So then when someone else does it, and this was a good spot from Kiera, um, you know, they're already kind of uh, fatigued from earlier. So many dives. Yeah. And it's really good. The, uh, the heel face dynamic worked well in this match that Kiera has elevated herself enough to have the crowd fully behind her and, you know, the huge crowd favorite that Allie was, uh, but the character development with Allie has been fantastic. She's like you had said in our uh, recap of 2018 that she really has, uh, you know, come around and is really progressed as a character. Uh, Allie does end up picking up the win with the code breaker. I, I think that maybe she should rename this move, have it, you know, a little, a little personal rather than just the code breaker like Jericho uses. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I've always wondered sometimes if the name for finishers, is that something that it, it, like Don um, comes up with or if the wrestlers actually pass it along and say, hey, this is what I'm calling it. So I think, I don't think it's Ali calling it the code breaker. I think just the move itself is considered the code breaker. It's no different than like when, say, someone hits the DDT, like when Dreamer hits the DDT, well, in ECW, they'd call it Dreamer DDT. But, you know, normally it's a DDT, they just call it DDT. But when Raven would hit one, it's the even flow. Even flow right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so I, I think, um, you know, maybe she doesn't have a name for it. Maybe she'll come up with something. But I will say this. This is the perfect example of having – you know, a way where you have established talent working with uh, up and coming talent. And I think that they can really get a lot of mileage out of Ali versus Kira. And I think that'll eventually help elevate Kira to the point where she can actually be a viable challenger for the knockouts championship. Yeah, because there was one point where I had feared that Kiera was just going to become the next, you know, Ava Story and all of them, where she was just the one taking the pin and things like that. But it seems like they're actually doing something with her, and that's really good to see. Yeah, it's it's needed. I mean, you look at the knockout division, and I think we've talked about this before. You know, they have enough knockouts, but then, you know, they have to face one another, and you got to be able to build someone. They really don't have that lower, t those lower tier knockouts that are essentially kind of used as enhancement talent. And uh, sometimes you need that. Well, just for all divisions, sometimes you need that to help uh, elevate others. Right. And I think that's where the partnerships come in. Like we saw in Vegas, where we had a couple matches where uh, I think it was Tessa faced Ray Lynn, and then you had Heather Monroe, Ruby Race that faced Jordan Grace a few weeks back. That's what they really need to be doing is utilizing this talent from other promotions to get them on TV and help elevate your stars without hurting another roster member. Mm hmm. Agree. Yeah. And then post match, Allie and Sue Young take out Kiara. She is ultimately saved by Jordan Grace. Jordan Grace clears the ring. And we get a homecoming match made, Jordan Grace and Kiara versus Allie and Sue Young. Uh, it felt like we should have had Allie versus Kiara at the pay-per-view, but they had gone with the match here. And I think this set up to a good tag match with the up-and-coming star of Jordan. And you needed somebody on Kiara's side to face the duo of Allie and Sue. Um, what are your thoughts on this match? I mean, albeit random, <clears throat> excuse me. Because I don't see how Jordan is any part of the storyline. I think she's just kind of aiding uh, Kiera, you know, being the baby face that saves the day. But I think the cool thing is there's so many different avenues they can go just with this match. Because I don't know about you, but I like to believe the Jordan and Katarina feud is uh, long from over. Um, so maybe we can see her interfere. I mean, then there's still Rosemary. Maybe she makes an appearance. I don't know what her health is at this current stage. But there's so many different ways. And then I think you still 
regardless of what happens in this match, you still can continue the Kiera and uh, Dark Alley feud. So I like that. I like a match where they can go so many different routes should they choose. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, what I, I would like to see happen is you have Sue come out with the undead maids and or bridesmaids and maybe have Katarina dress up as one. She can cause, you know, Jordan to take the loss or or Kiara to get pinned, whatever it is, and then have a beat down after the match. You have Rosemary come out with a save and you get the huge crowd reaction, even though Ali, I mean, uh, Rosemary still wouldn't have to do much work depending on her health. Um, I think that would be a good way to do it, too. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Like I said, man, the, and that's a good idea. There's so many different ways they can go about this. I mean, I, I, I could see a scenario, I guess the scenario that I was thinking, because um, I guess, I mean, even though I know you did your predictions and I recommend anyone listening to this pod to be sure to check out uh, Keith's predictions for homecoming, you know, spot on with some stuff. Um, but I, I would go with uh, Dark Alley and Sue Young winning. And I think a way that I could see happening is maybe you have Katarina come out and distract Jordan. And then that ends up causing um, Ali or Sue Young to kind of get the upper hand on Kiera and uh, pin Kiera. But yeah, I, I think to have Katarina or anything and come out at impersonating um, one of the uh, the brides, I think that'd be cool as well. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that's that would be a good direction for them. Uh, up next, we have Trevor Lee versus Killer Cross. Uh, I guess this is Trevor Lee's last televised match, and they uh, sent him out in a hell of a way. Uh, so apparently this match happened because Trevor Lee had barged into Impact Management's office and demanded that he be treated better and with more respect. He is, what, a three-time X Division champion, right? Yes, and former tag team champion. Right, yes. Um I mean, th this was all killer cross. He was no selling most of Trevor's offense. Um, yeah, th this is the end of uh, Trevor Lee and Impact Wrestling. Uh, we all kind of thought they could have done some more with him, but, you know, he was around for multiple eras, so people are eventually going to leave that just didn't fit the mold, so to speak, with the new regime. Well, he was a Jared hire, and I think, that's the one thing that we've seen time and time again. Some of these people sign these contracts under the, the old regime. And then once it gets close to running out, instead of them kind of being utilized, it seems like a lot of times the management's approaches let the contract just run out and expire. Um, you know, he, like I said, I thought he was always a guy that could have been elevated. Um, maybe they couldn't get behind his look. I mean, it was, it did come across as a, you know a bit bland but he was talented i think the one criticism folks had where i would see sometimes was they felt that an impact he didn't give it his all and when i mean i give it his all not lack of effort but he didn't go all out compared to when he competes in pwg and i think people had took issue with that um it's always funny though when we get a departing talent that's still you know at the tapings and probably asks for the release during the tapings like <laughs> you think the old impact when somebody was was getting ready to release getting ready to be released they'd put the title on them and then <laughs> we'd be in this big old thing but at least now you know when someone's on their way out i mean they essentially take them on their way out and this was no different <laughs> no i i think you're spot on with the look of him not you know this is tv wrestling it's different than the indie wrestling, like you said, at PWG. And he even said so himself that his batch, best matches haven't been televised. So I think, like I, I had said a while back with the whole Scarlet thing, I think they could have really turned the corner with uh, Trevor Lee had they done some character development with him, pair him with Scarlet and things like that. I, I think they could have done made that work. But, you know, it is what it is. And uh, he will be missed, but not irreplaceable you know nobody is unfortunately yep. i know so i mean the big thing happened after the match killer cross grabs the microphone wishes johnny impact luck in his match with brian cage and he asks everybody if they would like to see what happens when diplomacy fails killer cross grabs the timekeeper tells him to do whatever he says he then goes underneath the ring and grabs a cinder block has the timekeeper hold it against trevor lee's face 
and Killer Cross punches the cinder block, exploding it. Um, so this was a little interesting considering what happened, what, a month or so ago with the incident in, was it Mexico with the uh, cinder block? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, well, regardless of where it happened, you know, I'm honestly not su- uh, surprised that people didn't come out complaining about this after what happened. Granted, this was taped before the other cinder block spot had happened, and obviously this was a part of the show, but uh, uh, definitely made an impact, so to speak, uh, for Killer Cross. Good to see him doing more. He seems very confident. He really lives this character even on social media things like that i think there's there's a good uh future in the company for him yeah and i think the thing that i liked was the fact that you know he still mentioned johnny well he calls him john so he's gonna play a role in the main event at homecoming and it's gonna be nice to see how that uh plays out yeah no absolutely i think he is definitely the wild card in that match uh, then we had the GWN flashback. I don't even know what happened. I just fast forward through it. Uh, do you know what it was actually? Yeah, I fast forwarded it too. I <laughs> I stopped bothering with those things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's got to be a better way to push your network with not you uh, showing old stars and everything. But that's another conversation for a different time. Uh, that brings us to the main event. Ray Phoenix and Pentagon versus Brian Cage and Johnny Impact. So uh, what would you think about this match being put together? You know, on paper, it just didn't make any sense because you have two challengers teaming up and they're facing two, two of the challengers for the tag titles. I really thought it would have made a little more sense had they went up against a heel team. So maybe if you wanted to do Cross and Moose or whomever, but uh, with that said, I mean, it was a fine match. Um, I think it was just a way to showcase the participants at the upcoming pay-per-view. Um, it was funny because I'm all saying to myself, I said, we're getting this match between Cage and uh, Johnny Impact, but we've never really seen any type of uh, uh, dissension between them two. Like, you know, a lot of times it's just been kind of a looking eye to eye and stuff, and I guess some sort of mutual respect, and we finally got that. I mean, with the miscommunications and whatnot, and I thought that helped sell the match some come for a homecoming. So, yeah, you know, Lucha Brothers get the win. You know, they look strong heading into their tag title match with LAX, but I think the most important thing was to sell the match between Johnny Impact and Brian Cage, and I think it did a good job doing that. Yeah, I did. I don't know if I would have went the route of having your champion pinned like this. I think they could have just had all hell break loose and that would have just thrown the match out. I, th- I, I don't know what you think about that. Um, I, I guess the only reason, cause I thought the same thing. I was like, really, you know, but I think it's to place doubt. Cause we've heard killer cross talk about, you know, can you beat you know, get, can you beat Brian cage, you know, trying to put that doubt. So, <clears throat> excuse me for with him losing this match. I mean, you could argue that maybe, you know, he's second guessing himself. But they kind of booked themselves in a corner. We've seen this happen. I mean, <laughs> do you do you have Brian Cage eat the pin and then he's going into a title match, or do you have the champion? I mean, that's why these type of matches you try to kind of get away from. I mean, like you said, you could have easily done it gets too out of control, or you have run-ins like whether it's LAX or or Killer Cross or whomever, and throw the match out. But somebody had to eat the pin, and unfortunately, it was the world champion. Yeah. Not the way I would have booked it, but anyway, yeah, so this did build some heat uh, between Cage and Impact, so that was good. Uh, We had the pull-apart at the end. I mean, it it doesn't happen too often in Impact, so I can't really criticize it like it happens elsewhere, but uh, yeah, they made it, they did a good job ending the show with this. I think that definitely helped the main event for Homecoming, and then after it, I guess they showed the cold open, right? Is that what there was? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, they did a really nice job with that. Uh, their video packages are always fantastic. Yeah, and then the the brawl. I mean, it was it's funny. Um, and I like how they made Johnny Impact look that like he can go toe to toe with Brian Cage because obviously, you know, you look at the the size diff- uh, difference in 
one would assume that Brian K can just throw Johnny around, but they had him look uh, formidable against him. So that is encouraging leading up to their matchup. Yeah, even in losing, he didn't look weak at all in this match. Um, so the outcome, they they did a good job with it. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty excited for homecoming. It should, like I said in my predictions video, it's very good on paper. It's just up to the booking team at this point, and I hope. Uh, well, I really don't hope we don't get a return of Austin Aries. Yeah, um, just to, I don't know if you had any more thoughts on the show, but just to close that out, I'd say this. I mean, you know, it's unfortunate that the pop and impact relationship ended it the way it did. I mean, we'll obviously never know what transpired. I mean, obviously now I guess the deal, it seems that is better for them financially, which is always wonderful. Um, but, you know, this was a nice way to go out. Um but as far as for homecoming, I, I think the pay-per-view is going to be good, but I just really kind of feel like they really got a hit on this only because you're debuting on a new channel post homecoming. So what better way to kind of get people who have the channel to be able to tune in uh, uh, by you know throwing on a good show and they don't have to do anything over the top, just stick to their guns, the stuff that they know that works and they should be fine. And the last thing I'll just add on it is because now it's not about oh well if they don't deliver the company's gonna die but once again there's options now and i think they can really set the tone being the the first pay-per-view of the year so if they do right they'll be able to set that tone but if they fail to deliver i mean you know like i said they have their audience you know we're fans we're going to continue to watch but i like to believe the goal is to expand you know them expanding will help them you know give us more programming more pay-per-views etc yeah no absolutely you are completely 100 percent right there um it is interesting to note that pursuit has updated their website with impact listed however not in the tv listings but it does list impact as being from 10 to 11 30 so i don't know if they're cutting the show down or that was an oversight but uh yeah that debuts this friday and that should be interesting to see i think everybody's kind of curious just to see what's going to happen leading up to that we have one night of tapings in nashville after the pay-per-view and then on to mexico so i wonder if they're going to do some special stuff for the one night of taping but any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Uh, let me ask you, and I'm, I know this is an impact, you know, we're doing recording impact, but what, what are your initial thoughts of the announcement with the AEW? Um, you know, I, I, I love that there's options and I, you know, hope they do well, but uh, this, if they're able to get exclusive talent and people, are able to make a living from wrestling for one promotion because I, we see this a lot with impact where you'll see guys here you'll see them on mlw you sell, see them in lucha underground and they're utilizing different companies to make a living but if they're able to make a living wrestling for one company and under an exclusive contract it's going to change the landscape of independent wrestling that's my personal opinion yeah i agree same thing and it's kind of why, and I think we both preach this, and a lot of people preach this, it's why the need, there's never been a dire need for Impact to create stars than it is now. Only because the people that they're trying to chase now with AEW and then even a MLW, and then obviously you always still got the E, and then Ring of Honor as well, there's going to be a bidding war. So I really think if they were to go the route of, when I'm saying cheap talent, like ones that have some potential, ain't really on the radar, and you know, bring them on to impact and grow them into their own stars, it could be beneficial for them. And I mean, who knows? There might be that person out there that they can grab, and be, he can he or she becomes a big star in impact, and then that gener, gener ah, excuse me <laughs> generates revenue for the company. So, um, you know, my my whole thing with it is, I think it's cool. It gives wrestlers another. Uh, place to go to um you know now there, there's options and i think wrestlers want that and yeah i'm in agreement with you i mean if it's a, an opportunity where someone can make an honest living instead of having to wrestle four and five different promotions then i mean all all for it but uh we just have to see the one thing about buzz is buzz can only go so long then you have to start producing and right now they got the buzz 
And um, yeah, much to some people's displeasure because it kind of, in a sense, overshadowed the uh, uh, pay-per-view event, uh, homecoming pay-per-view. But uh, Buzz only goes so long, so I'm interested to see what they do. But um, my main focus is now is uh, homecoming, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, should be a good show, and they just need to keep doing what they're doing, take chances with booking, and build new stars. So uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for checking it out. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.